Hey guys, this is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching. Uh, it's Sunday, July 4th, so happy July 4th. Um, I was on uh, Twitter this morning and someone asked a, uh, uh, and yesterday, and someone asked a, uh, a pretty interesting question. And so I wanted to respond. I was kind of going back and forth with uh, uh, No BS Trading. And um, so I'll show you the interaction here that uh, he and I had really quick, really quickly, um, which was uh, from uh, Ankush Goal, which with the original um, strip to this, let me see if I can find it, was... Uh, so he and I were having a conversation, uh, I mean, uh, Nob's, trade, Nob's Trades, and uh, this gentleman asked, can you please share some examples of the to see the rotations, right? And what OBS responded to were these, these picks right here. And it was really, it was a good explanation, so I'm going to make it big. So what he is showing here, um, one, of the th one of the tricks, and by the way, before we get started, if you have any questions to me directly or you'd like um, a pass to the room or join the room, right? Send me an email. The email is right here. It's tradeandperform at gmail.com. T-R-A-D-E-N-P-E-R-F-O-R-M at gmail.com. You can go from there. So um, the way he explained it was pretty simple. So the question was, can you can you uh, expand on the rotations a little bit, right? And he said, look, and so Nobs said, look at the last three rotations. Look at the number above the pivot rotations. Notice the numbers are decreasing. The last number has a hashtag above it, right? So obviously that hashtag is a uh, is an algo, and what that algo is showing specifically is this rotation shows less offers lifted and more bids are getting hit. Sellers are taking control, right? So this is one very valid way of looking at that information. But this information, the way it's presented, really overwhelms me. And this is nothing negative against Nobs. He does a great job. His software is great. I have not been in his room and as I have not used his software, but I know he's helped a lot of people, so total thumbs up, right? But for me, I'm ADD and I'm dyslexic, and I need a simpler way to process, particularly when the market's moving very fast. And this turns out, with, particularly with the numbers on it, to be a, a lot of data for me to process. So I'm gonna show you the different way that I look um, at rotations and waves and how it helps me make decisions, right? It's a different look. It's not more right or less right. It's the way that's best for you, right? When I'm working with people one-on-one -on -one or in the room, it's always take what you like, right? But whatever you have, you've gotta take it and make it your own. You have to have understanding then you have to take it and make it your own so you have a way of understanding it. So I don't have the exact date here. I know he's on 921. I'm going to use a more recent example in uh, in uh, NQ and kind of show the, show a similar setup to what I'm looking for and how the algo helps me trigger it and also how I use the waves and the rotations, right? And rotations can mean a lot of things, by the way. Rotations can be um, the size of the average rotation. Like, for example, on NASDAQ, the rotation size has really collapsed over the last two weeks. The normal rotation is 30 to 60 points. The average rotation is cut down to 18 points um, over the last two weeks. So that's the natural harmonic rotation, meaning how much it goes up or down within one rotation on average, right? So it's really collapsed in here. Um, so I'm not going to use Friday. I'm going to use Thursday because Friday had almost no rotations. It was really slow. So before I jump into that, next, next requirement for understanding is what are the algos that I use to trigger the trade. So there's three primary algos I have the members look for. There's more trades than this, but three primary algos. And I'm going to point them out right now. The algo with the highest odds. I want to say this again. The algo with the highest odds are when you get triangle down like you have right here. I'll spread this out so you can see it really clearly. Triangle down followed by triangle up. That is the highest odd setup. It generates monster, and I mean monster, p &L returns. For example, in this one, this entry here is at $14,500, and it gave you a roll up to $14,554, $500, right? Excuse me, $1,000, I apologize. Again, you'll see it over here. 
triangle up. Excuse me, this skipped one. Well, that's a more advanced setup. We'll skip that for a second. I want it to come all within three bars. And I believe the first one came prior to 9 a.m. And that has a higher failure. You can see right here, I generally recommend taking the trades after 9 a.m. There's triangle down followed by triangle up. For me, that would have been a stop. It's highly unlikely I scaled that out. I would have tried to get um, an extension out of it. And that just didn't happen there. And that's not abnormal at 9 a.m. Okay. So the next trade that I am looking for, trade number two, second highest odds, is if I get what's called an energy bar. That's this bar right here with a little triangle. And it's important to know that these form in real time, right? So once this prints, it doesn't unprint. Once this triangle prints, it doesn't unprint, right? So if you go through that again, looking at after after 9 a.m., right, which is 9 a.m. Central Time, skipping the first half hour. Um, I'm going to give examples of that again because it's going to play an important role here for a second. So um, energy bar, triangle up, right? Energy bar, triangle up. Energy bar, triangle up. Energy bar, triangle down, right? And then you get all the way down here, energy bar, triangle up at 10.30 in the morning. And you can just see over and over again, that trade um, provides um, not a 100% win rate, but a huge amount of wins. Again, you would have seen like, for example, if I took it here, this would have been a stop for me. I'm just not gonna kick this trade out for one bar. But again, I would have come right back in right over here. Energy bar, triangle up. And then the third one is just simply the speed bar which is the yellow and blue bars that appear on here, followed by a triangle. And that's the, the third best trade. So there's three trades, and I'm looking for a very specific series of setups within the wave. So now we have the base basis for how I am making decisions, right? And the algo is really leading me into that decision process, so I'm not constantly grinding, and I'm getting to acceptance. If this fails, it's going to cost the the price for getting into this trade is going to cost me X amount of dollars. I'm not trying to miss. I'm not trying to avoid the failures. I know the win rates are so high that I'm simply trying to take the trades in real time, right? So let's erase all these lines. Maybe that's this. And now let's talk about waves. And in his example, so I'm going to go through this. He appears to be giving an example of a wave into a high and he gives two examples by the way i'm going to push this back in for a second uh and see here's the second example um in the low and again he's showing this move to the low right and he sh in his algo right this rotation shows more offers lifted and less bids are getting hit buyers are taking control and then he's showing look at the last three rotations look at the numbers below the pivot rotations notice the numbers are increasing and the last number has a number hashtag above the number. That's fine. Again, this format is hard for me to personally follow only because my ADD and my dyslexia, the numbers overwhelm me. Zero criticism of this gentleman. Um, I'm probably in total agreement with everything that he does. Um, it's just a way of presenting similar information, right? So when I look at this information, so let's go talk about Let's take a look at the bigger picture, talk about a move into a high and a move into the low. So here at 847, right? So this is earlier than I would be trading, right? So I'm going to use this example uh, because now I'm going to talk about the waves. So these waves down here are another way of looking at rotation, right? Right here. These are Wyckoff waves, and they tell me where I see energy. Now I'm looking for patterns within the waves, right? And particularly what I'm looking for um, are waves that occur after I get setups that I get off the algo that occur after I get a push up where the third wave is the biggest wave. It doesn't necessarily have to make it to a new high, but I want wave one, wave two, and I want the third wave to be biggest, right? So all that tells me right here, the third wave by itself doesn't tell me anything. It just tells me start looking, right? So once I get up here, now I'm looking for the setup. So this is before 9 a.m. And I, if I was looking for a short here, nothing sets up, right? So even though I know that we could roll over from here, I now need my algo to fire. And the first place that my algo fires or tells me that we could possibly be short 
is actually on the trade that has the third place in terms of high odds, first, second, third. This is the third place. And so I know that I've got this biggest wave, third biggest wave up. I know the wave into the high is divergent. I can see that here, right? And then I can also see, relatively speaking, see how, look at this move, look at this wave, and look at this wave. Now, I can see that there's not very much energy here, and this is the move that they get, right? So I want to show you something. If I take that move, I'm going to copy and move that drawing. So see that move? This is where that next wave begins, right? Now, notice this wave is bigger, right? This wave is bigger. If you compare these two, uh, these two lines, you can see that the wave is bigger, but not much relative to the wave. So I personally, I don't know if David Weiss or anyone else would agree with me, but I call that a, um, I call that less return for investment. It's not even a shortening of the thrust. It's just more energy with very little return for the more energy. So that puts me on alert that, hey, things could change here. So I'm looking for two things at this point. First of all, this is the wave. This is the wave into the high. Um, and then this is an energy bar triangle up. So these are important. There's multiple ways to use these. In addition to being a, a long signal, I also know within a wave, when I get an energy bar and a triangle up, right? So now I'm going to, now that I know that I have a shortening of the wave, and just stay calm through this. This isn't a necessarily a fast thing. This is just a observe, note, right? We go through this in the room, observe, note, and then look for potential setups, right? So in a rotation, right? One of the big things is this is the last rotation to a high. And I cover this a lot when I'm coaching people one-on-one. -on -one. For me, the, the very top of that rotation occurs on this bar right here. So this area right in here, here, I'm going to highlight this real quick. If I can. Let's see if I have an easy way of... We're going to highlight it like this. I definitely don't like this. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can get grab my tools here. Okay, we got that worked out. So what I'm looking at here, guys, so for me, the top of the wave to the high is this box. So I'm gonna pull this box out. So you're gonna notice a couple of things about that. Number one, that once we get below, so this is important guys, and, and again, this is for the members in the room. So this is, once you get underneath that wave to a high, this whole area becomes resistance, right? So I have two ways of doing this. If I want to get aggressive before we get underneath that, that wave, and particularly below this energy bar, I, get, I can look for my first algo within this area, right? So the problem with doing that is if you don't get below the wave, you're going to get jammed like right here. So see this? This is a speed bar with a tri triangle down, right? That is a valid short entry, right? That gets stopped and never gets any extension because we don't get below the wave. So one of the things I counsel, uh, particularly to my, so all of us are day traders, and so we all fall on a, on, a, on a scale of aggressiveness. If zero is the least aggressive and 10 is the most aggressive, shorting below you before you get the wave to the high is the most aggressive. It's most, most likely to jam you. Right, so it's very important that you have this idea, right? So there's a trade-off just like everything else. What we want is once we get below the wave, we want these retraces back underneath, right? We want these retraces back underneath because they give the larger extension to the downside. So the entire concept is very important. Uh, the entire concept is very important to trading as a whole, right? So again, this is going back to Thursday morning. You can see that once we were underneath the wave, so if you wanted to be aggressive, right? If you wanted to be aggressive, again, if you took these in series, you worked out just fine, right? But once you got underneath the wave and you could get the backside pushed back up, so now you know you have buyers trapped up here because this is the rotation or the wave to the high. You're now underneath it. And now I'm looking for potential entries 
underneath. So this is one of the ways I gain a bias as to which way I want to trade. Because once I have the wave, I have the buyers trapped above me, right? Now I can look and expect rotation down. As I come back up, I'm now looking for a great entry, right? So I don't want to just take price blindly. I want the algo to trigger me in. This is just how I trade it. I have customized this algo to give me a very high win rate. You don't have to have a high win rate, or most people don't have to have a high win rate. I do have to have a high win rate. It's just simply how I work, right? It's very, very important for me to have a high win rate. I don't know how else to uh, express that in any other um, in any other way, right? So um, at any rate, long story. Uh, long story short. Hold on a second. As you push across, right, now I want to start looking for the algos to set me up for potential shorts, right? So let's erase everything here. And go like this. Okay, so here's our wave to the high. So now I'm just going to go and look and see where the algos fired me in, since my bias would now switch to the short side. If I got back above here, or I trapped someone else underneath, I would start looking long, right? So you can see here, I get a speed bar triangle down. Notice the difference. Speed bar triangle down keeps getting stuffed here. Before you're below, you're stopped at your buyers that have been trapped, right? Now they're giving giant extensions. This is the third best setup, right? Now you're coming down. Notice I don't get an energy bar. The energy bars really give me a good clue of when we might turn the other direction, right? We come all the way back up. Again, my bias is to the short side. No short setup all the way through here until right here. This is my number one setup right here. That's my highest odds. Uh, well, excuse me, second highest odds, right? If the triangle had been over one to the left, that would be my highest odds. But energy bar, which is also a speed bar, triangle down, that is uber high odds. So this first entry here is worth, um, and I'm eyeballing this, but let's call it 14 540 to roughly 14500 This is on one contract, that's an $800 rip, right? You don't have to go long, but I would definitely cover that trade right there at the latest. And so it might have been, it might have turned it from a 40 to a 20 trade, right? So it's still $400 if you followed the algo all the way through, right? Pushes all the way back up again, right? Again, I know I'm trapped on my wave to the high over here. Here's my next entry, right? The stop is both bars, so this is important. I usually want at least a two to one RR. You don't have to have it because the win rate's high, but I do shoot for it, right? So the entry on that bar is roughly 14,530. The stop is roughly 14,542. So I run roughly 22 points in RR on that trade. So if I enter 14,530 and I want 22 points, I need to get to 1408. That right there gives me my two to one RR. It's important, right? Because just like in all other methods, there's going to be times when you're going to get stopped. So you want to try to get at least a two to one risk reward. Again, there was no signal here to tell you to cover per se. This would just be a straight RR trade if you're going to do it. I tend to try to push to a key location. You can see this trade ultimately prior to getting a high odds turn, which would have been right here, right? Ends up being a 15,529, 15,530 to 154, let's call it 85, right? So 30 to 85 is 30, 45 points, just a little bit underneath this rip down on a single contract's worth a little bit on a mini. That was worth about $1,000, $900 give or take. If you covered it at the low perfectly, 
it was worth a thousand dollars, right? But we don't always do that. Additionally, you'll see that I still don't have my buyer being trapped is going to be all the way up here. That's my last energy bar, right? If I was going to count a, the other way to look at look at it is a wave to a low would have been this wave right here. But again, I don't have anything mega solid. Now I'm going to talk about this move to the low. And again, this was real time. This was real time on um, Thursday, right? So again, looking at the waves, one of the things you'll notice is, first of all, one, two, three. This is my biggest wave down here. I'm on the alert looking for an algo to start triggering me to the long side. Very, very important, right? Again, one, two, three, right? Then here... right that would that would make me want to take meaning it's one two three and if i'm aggressive right that would make me want to take that long now do i have all the pieces no they're not always going to fall into place exactly like i want the move to the top was pretty well packaged additionally you'll see that this was a engulfing wave right here this wave right here see how big that wave is it's the biggest wave off the bottom so you can come back and say well simon what about this wave this wave was pretty big and that's true Except if you go back and look to the left, this wave was unable to get back on top of this wave, right? And it's very normal when you come off the top to have a big wave to push back up into resistance and then fail. So understand, I'm using the waves as background information. I'm using the algo as my entry and exit. It's a two-step process, right? And it gives me a ton of clarity while I'm making a trading decision. So now as I come across over here, right, I see that I have my biggest wave to the downside. So I fall, if there's a zero to 10 on aggression, I'm very aggressive, which means I probably take some stops up, upstairs, but I also take these longs right over here. But now what you're going to see is in this wave to the downside, this is the top of that wave. And we clearly get above. So I'm gonna show you something. Once I get above that wave, right, the story changes. So we're going to erase this one more time, right? Because now we have a new wave down. It's not perfect, but the information's already there. And I know that sellers are trapped in this wave. How do I know it? I had the push to the low. I had an engulfing wave, and we closed above. So here's a great, a great example of where I'm going to get stopped. Once I see this wave, I am not taking this, even though it's a high setup, high odd setup. I am not taking that combo. Why? Once I see that engulfing wave, I'm pretty sure we're going to push out to the upside and that sellers have been trapped. So I'm flipping my mindset now to look long. So now come through here. I'm probably going to take this and it is highly unlikely, excuse me. It is, I'm going to take this setup right here and it is highly unlikely that I'm going to uh, exit this trade right here. So I'm going to take a stop right here. This stop for me Now remember, I have I have options here, but I probably took this trade out right here at the latest. If I went long right here, right at fourteen, let's call it let's just call it eighty for easy math. Fourteen eighty at worst case scenario, that was fourteen five ten. That's six hundred dollars a contract right there, assuming I didn't kick it out at, at seventeen or twenty for whatever reason up here into resistance, right? Um, so it doesn't matter. I either ended up making $600 a contract on that or closer to $1,000 a contract, one of the two on that rotation up. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to go, oh, that's a continuation long. The backside tested and found a response. I'm going to go long. So my loss on this trade, let's go and move the magic pieces around. Probably went long right there at 17, and I took a stop at probably, let's just call it 500, right? So I lost 17 points or almost $400 a contract. Let's just call it that way. Let's just assume it's 20 points. I lose $400 a contract. So I made between $600 and $1,000 a contract here. I lost $1,000 here. But now I'm going to be looking for another long. So I'm just going to do this bar by bar. Okay. See that? That's an energy bar but no triangle followed it. 
Okay, no trade. That's a triangle up with a speed bar. I don't think I would have taken this. This is a really bastardized bar. I want a full bar when I get that, meaning I want the wick to look normal. That was just a weird bar that formed, right? Long. There's no question in my mind. Speed bar, energy bar, triangle up, triangle down, triangle up. This is my highest odds trades. I would be long at the close of that bar, which would be 14, 501 and a quarter. Okay. Now watch the push out from here. Right. So see how I'm using the waves and the rotations. I've gotten above my rotation to the low. I know I have my buyers trapped underneath. This is effectively a 50, 60 retrace. Right. And I've gotten my highest odds entry off that corner. I'm going to try to stick that for 50 points. Right. At 14,500, let's call it. I'm almost going to ignore anything that comes along. So you're going to see I'm going to take some heat, right? So my first move is going to be from 14,500 to 14,530. So that's $600 on one contract. And now what I'm looking for is a high odds setup to the downside to exit. I'm going to try to ride that trade. That would be my at latest. If I got this energy bar right here, with in the last hour, and I don't even know if I would have held that long because this is 14,500 all the way up to 14,550. I've gotten my thousand dollars a contract, right? But once I see this, I would definitely be out at let's just call it 14,540 from 14,500. 800 dollars a contract, and my day is done. So there are stops, and you are using the waves. I'm going to give you one more example before I go and enjoy my July 4th using the waves and rotation. So you can see here. We're on open drive higher, right? And these are a little bit harder to work out. But what you can see here, see how I get that, that combo where I get one, right? So I actually need down rotation. So see these down rotations don't help me much. They're just all being absorbed. There is no rotation on Friday, which makes trading very, very hard to begin with, right? Um, and sometimes the patterns, uh, uh, conflict, right? Hey, girls, give me just one second. I'm almost done, okay, sweethearts? You need dry erase markers. Okay, well, we'll look for those in just a couple. Look around and see if you see some dry erase markers in here. I don't have. Um, I would uh, we'll dry that. Okay, well, that's not my fault. Give me a couple minutes and I'll be done, okay? Actually, it was your fault. It was my fault, okay. You Guys, sorry. So, girls, I'm in a conference call. Give me just. Look around, see if you find one with a cap on it. Okay, here, maybe this one will work. Go show that to mom, okay? <laughs> Go look around. That's the only one I have, okay? So, so what I'm trying to point out is there's no rotation here. You'll see here that we finally got some down rotation, right? So I want to show you how I would have used this on Friday, and I pointed it out in the room in real time, right? So this is my wave to the high right here. It's not much of one but it meets all the qualifications. There's my energy bar. And when there's no rotation, it's just tough. This was trend day up. That's my wave to the high, right? So what you will see here is um, this blue bar is actually a fourth setup. That would count as a short if you're uber aggressive. But once you get underneath, you can see here that the algo triggered, right? Here's trigger one, excuse me, wrong, wrong tool. There we go. Here's trigger one. Here's trigger two, right? And you can see you get very little extension on these. It's about 15, 20 points, not more than that, right? From this location, there's none over here, my dear. Go play. I'm almost done, and then we'll go play. So two things about that, right? So I don't want to go long here because I'm not over a wave. I haven't pushed over a wave. And you can also see that I just don't have any clear readings on the waves. Just the market's really muted. But I know one thing. If this is my wave to a high and then I got underneath it, I do know that normally I would get a big extension down. So the other way to use those waves is once I get above that wave down. See how that's the biggest wave off the high? So once I get above that, which occurs right over here, I'm now looking for a pushback to give me my long setup. So guys, this is again aimed at the guys in the room. See that pushback? Energy bar, triangle up. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. And again, you'll see all afternoon, 
energy bar, triangle up. Again, you're not underneath any waves. You're looking long all the way through here. You're not looking for shorts. So uh, to answer the question of this gentleman, that's how I use rotation within a wave to understand how um, to understand how I make decisions, right? And what I do in my room and in my coaching is I try to impart that to people to help them get from break even or losing traders to consistently profitable traders, right? So not easy, takes a little bit of time to train your brain, but that's how I use it. I, um, I again, I'm just using this example and giving a little uh, uh, from nobs and using a little bit uh, different uh, perspective uh, on how I try to simplify it so it works with the way my backwards ADD and dyslexic brain works. So that's how I make money. Uh, that's how people in the room make money. I hope that helped. Uh, if you have any questions, email me, trade and perform, T-R-A-D-E, the letter N, P-E-R-F-O-R-M at gmail.com. Uh, I think Nobes is an excellent follow. Um, also, Alpha, Alpha Algo is an excellent follow. And I have no contradiction with either one of these gentlemen. I think their work is excellent. And uh, I hope that helped. Have a wonderful day. Um, ask for a three-day pass if you'd like to come to our room and see what we do. I'll talk to you later, guys.